Shalom Aleichem and welcome to Simple Biblical Hebrew. Today we want to do a Hebrew words study. And we want to look at what love means in Hebrew. What does love mean in Hebrew? So we're going to do our best to explore that. Here you see love, ah, heb. It's an olive, a hay, and a bet, a hev. You can say the bet with a B sound or a V sound, depending on sort of where you're at with your Hebrew. I have, okay? So that, that's the word in Hebrew. And maybe you know love is the greatest sort of topic in Tanakh, in the Bible. It's the most loftiest commandment, the greatest commandment we're taught. In fact, Adonai tells his people Israel in Deuteronomy chapter 6, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. Shema, the Shema. Now here it is in, in Hebrew. And let's see if we can find love in here, the Hebrew word ahev. Okay, so Shema, Shema Israel, hear Israel, Adonai Eloheinu, and the Lord is is our God. Adonai Achad, He's the Lord is one. And here we go. Va'ahevta et Adonai Elohecha, bechal levercha, u bechal nefshecha, u bechal meodecha. Okay, Shema, and here you see love. I have. So, the most important thing that Hashem tells His people Israel is to love, to love Him. That's the greatest commandment. We know Yeshua, our rabbi, taught us the same thing, that Shema is the greatest commandment in Torah, to, to love the Lord our God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. And then He said the second is, from Leviticus to, to love our neighbor as ourselves. So love is the most important thing in the Bible. Love is the most important thing to God. That's important as we explore what, is, what does love mean in Hebrew. Well, first of all, it's the most important thing we can think about outside of God Himself, Hashem Himself, the Lord Himself. Now here's Deuteronomy 6, the Shema the way it may have been written at an earlier time. Uh, in fact, this, this is the way Moses would have written Hebrew with the old Paleo letters. Right here, Shema. Shema Israel. So this is in the Paleo Hebrew. This is the way Hebrew looked when Tanakh was actually written. Shema Israel, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Achad, and here's love. Well, ahevta, ahev, et Adonai Elohecha. So here's love in Paleo Hebrew, the way Moses would have perhaps written love in David. It's important to understand when you're studying Hebrew that Aleph, the first letter, in the Hebrew Aleph Bet came into existence looking like this between 586 and, and the time of Christ, 6 BC. After the Babylonian captivity, uh, the Israelites adopted the block letter form of, their, of the letters of their Aleph Bet that the, um, the people over in Babylon and Assyria and all of that use. But before the Babylonian captivity, this is what Aleph looked like, maybe to Isaiah and so on. So from 4000 BC at the time of Adam until 586 BC, Aleph looked something like this. It was a picture of a, I don't know if you can see the ox head there. It's a picture of an ox head. So these older letters were pictures of something and, and had meaning in themselves, just to stand alone. Olive says something about Hashem. Olive says something about Yeshua. 
Olive says something in all of creation. So when we look at all of today, we remember what he looked like in days past to discover what is he saying just on his own. So when we look at a Hebrew word, you know, love, a hev, and we want to know more about what it means, we want to then look at what, what do each of the letters say in the word because they're all saying something individually and then they get together and make words. So here they are, for instance, an olive, picture of an ox head. Here's an, a hay, the way it used to look. And it's a picture of sort of an outstretched hand. And then here's a here's a bet. It was a picture of a tent. And you go in here, and the tent's kind of closed right now, but you could go in to the tent, to the house. I have. So these are trilateral roots, and love in Hebrew means to love. It's the most common word to love in the Tanakh. I have. But if we want to go deeper into what I have is saying then we want to go down to the roots of the word. And so these trilateral roots, right, three-letter roots in Hebrew, shoresh, root, oftentimes can be boiled down to a more simpler bilateral root so that ahev comes from hab. Ahev comes from this Hebrew root hab. Here it is, hab, hab. So hab in Hebrew then, the, the hay in ancient times had something to do with breath or desire. You know, when we make that hay sound, um, it, it takes breath and, and it ties into spirit and desire and all these things in the Hebrew language. Whereas the bet, the bet is the picture of a tent or a house. So hab, the root of ahab, the root of love, has to do with breath or spirit or desire in the house, right? Love has to do with, you know, you, you desire something as much as you desire perhaps your own household, your own family. It's intense desire like that. Hab. If I go to the Blue Letter Study Bible, which you can use online, you can download the app. It's a good study tool. And then they have a place there where you can donate if you'd like to support this awesome software. So uh, here's Shema in, in the Blue Letter Bible, the Blue Letter Study Bible app. And you can just go online and find it there as well. So if I go to Deuteronomy chapter 6, and I just want to look up love in Shema, right? That Hebrew word, love. Hear, O Israel, um, you shall love the Lord thy God. So I want to look up what love means using the Blue Letter Study Bible. So I'm going to click on that, and I'm going to go here to interlinear concordance. When you tap on that, um, you can see here a list of all of the words in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 5. Here it is in Hebrew. Ba'ahavta. There's love. Ahev. And then here it is over here where you can look it up and see what the scholars believe it means. So I'll click on that. Ahev. And it'll tell you how to pronounce it. Ahab. It means human love for somebody. It includes family, right? We saw that, the bet. Uh, can even get into love in a sexual way. Um, even you can intensely sort of desire food and drinks and other things. Wisdom. So, love. It, it's love. Now, if I go down this page just a little bit. Um, 
there's all these different tools you can look up what love means in these different study tools that w would have been books that you had all over your desk you know 25 years ago but now each book is just here and you can click on it in fact here's a, a famous Gesenius's Hebrew Chalde lexicon and if I tap on this I can look up what love what what love uh, meant to Gesenius so here it is love I have a half and number one it means to desire all right we saw it was a hay and a bet to desire to breathe after because remember that that hay was breath to breathe after anything so the signification of breathing after hence longing okay is proper to the syllables here we go hob so even in Gesenius' uh, lexicon, he points out that hob is the root of love, hob, ahab, to breathe, to desire, it comes from hob, to love, to delight, a lover, you can get in all kinds of things, but there's, there's hob. So what, what is hob in Hebrew? What is hob in Hebrew now? Here we have psalm 29 verse 1 and 2 and you may know as scribe to to the lord oh you sons of mighty ascribe mark that word ascribe to the lord the glory uh, glory and strength ascribe to the lord the glory do his name worship the lord in holy array notice these words as, ascribe in hebrew that word ascribe is hob here we have it in uh, in Hebrew. You see, Hab, Havu, La Adonai B'nai Elim. Right? Um, give to to Adonai, O you sons of of God. Havu, give to to the Lord, Kavod the Oz. Right? Uh, glory and and power, glory and strength. Here it is again. Havu, La Adonai. So, Hab in Hebrew means to give right havu la donai kavod shmo hishtahavu la donai behadrat kodesh right worship the lord in in the beauty of of holiness havu means to to give to the lord to give so the root then of ahav love in hebrew the root is to give hab This makes sense then when you when you think of verses like in the the New Testament, John three sixteen, for God so loved the world that he gave. You see? How did God show his love for the world? He gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. So there you can see another famous love verse in the Bible, this time in the New Testament, and we see how love and giving are always near each other because loving, agape in greed, is to give, to give of oneself, to give of one's time, to give of one's resources. I think Yeshua said there's no greater love than this than one would lay down his life for his friends. And you are my friends if you do what I command you, he said. He laid down his life for us. He gave himself on our behalf for the forgiveness of our sins. And then he calls us now to walk that same kind of life, to walk in his footsteps, to take up our cross daily and follow him and to give our lives first for God and then for people, for our neighbors. That's what love is in Hebrew. The essence of love is intense desire towards something to give to that object of desire. Ahav. This might be applied to the, the believer's life if we maybe listen to the words of Paul, for instance, in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. 
the love chapter, the famous love chapter. In verse 4, maybe we remember him saying this. He said, he said, love is patient and love is kind. So, in other words, love gives patience. To, to love is to give out patience even when somebody you know, doesn't deserve it, or when they're really pushing our buttons, right? Love is kind, right? So it, it gives out kindness, even when the kindness isn't due. It is not jealous, so it gives trust. It does not brag, because it gives humility, and so on. It is not arrogant, it does not act unbecomingly, it does not speak, it does not seek its own, excuse me, it's not provoked. So all of these attributes of love are opportunities for us to give right we give out patience that's love we give out kindness even when it's not due that's love and so on we give of ourselves we give of our time we give of our 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 the works of our hands we do everything we can each day to make a mark in Hashim's name to to make a mark in Yeshua's name to to make a mark of love, right? To, to give to the world, to give to our families, to give to our churches or our synagogues, our congregations, to, to give of ourselves is the greatest commandment. To love the Lord our God first and to love our neighbor as ourselves. And so we want to be giving people in Hashem's name. We want to be giving people in Yeshua's name as His followers. And uh, by this, all people will know you're my disciples if you have love for one another. I hope that blesses you today. I hope that gives you a little bit more light into the etymology of Ahev, love in Hebrew, and just a little piece of what it may be saying to us. That's not all of it, and that's not exhaustive, but that's a, that's a good start if you're looking to dig deeper into that beautiful Hebrew word, love.